Welcome back. Let's play Bloodborne for Katie. We just downed the living failures last time. And before we move on to fight uh, the true boss of, of uh, the Astral Clock Tower and the Research Hall, we're just gonna take a little look around at the at the beautiful environment that From Software has created for us, because we're pretty high up here, we can see almost the whole nightmare from here. See more parts of the city rising like mountains in the distance. Other towers and all. And then you have this this great lake. Again, that water motif. Anyway, this DLC is pretty nicely compressed. Three levels, five bosses, and two of those bosses are right next to each other. Literally behind this door, and you get the key to this door from the Living Failures, and right behind this door is the next boss. Yo, dog, I heard you like boss fights, so we put a boss fight right after your boss fight. Weird sound desync there. Oh well. Welcome to the Astral Clock Tower. And who's this lovely lass? A corpse should be left well alone. Secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest death will kill you now. <laughs> From your wild curiosity. Hmm, that French accent, that blonde hair, that porcelain face. Garman did indeed model the doll from the dream after Lady Maria. Suggesting that they knew each other and that they felt very warmly towards each other. So, Maria, having been a contemporary of Garamond's, has been in the Nightmare for a very long time, but uh, has not succumbed to beasthood. She's remained herself. I think it's quite interesting considering the other things that have happened to the other founders of the church and the hunt. But she stands here at the top of the tower, guarding the the, the the source of the nightmare, the secret that so many are willing to die to protect. The sin of the old hunters that bore their their uh, their own personal hell. Anyway, Maria is an insanely fun boss fight. One of the best in the whole game. Uh, she's tough. Especially in this second and eventually third phase, uh, where she sticks her Rakuyo, her katana, inside herself, and uh, it becomes uh, buffed with uh, blood attacks. Uh, eventually, she gains a third phase where, on top of the blood attacks, uh, there also is a is a area of effect like fire attack to all of her attacks. I'm saying attack a lot. There's no way around it. It's an action game. Uh, she gets a lot of uh, frightening and surprising new moves with all the blood stuff, uh, including the blood lance, which is extremely tough to dodge. That's the blood lance. It also does a ton of damage. Because she just sits there for quite a while and then it comes out very suddenly. Uh, it, the timing is very difficult to work out. Uh, I believe she can be parried out of it. You can probably be parried out of all of her, her blood attacks, but, uh, or stunned out of it, at least, if you don't get the timing quite right. Uh, but yeah. These parts of the fight are very tough. Early on, she's very easy to parry, and her attacks 
are are pretty manageable to dodge, but it's at this point that they get a lot more aggressive and her covers a lot more ground. So you really do need to be able to dodge pretty well or know her animations and know when you're supposed to shoot to cancel them. And here's the start of that third phase. In a way, I talked uh, two videos ago about how the research hall reminded me of Dark Souls 3, a game that would release shortly after uh, the release of this DLC. Lady Maria 2, uh, in her third phase, with the, the, the sort of uh, blood fire area of effects things, it's very similar to uh, the main story bosses in Dark Souls 3, or the, uh, the premise of Dark Souls 3 is that, uh, oops, the primordial fire that's kept the Age of the Gods going is going out, and, uh, well, we resurrected a bunch of previous Lords of Cinder who, who kept it going in previous ages, uh, but they all fucked off and went home and aren't, aren't doing anything to help. So you gotta go kill them and bring their ashes onto their throne so that we can link the fire and keep the party going. Uh, so the main bosses are the Lords of Cinder, uh, including the Abyss Watchers and Yorm the Giant. Yorm! Uh, Yorm McDonald, the Giant. Uh, Aldrich, Devourer of Gods, and the Twin Princes, Lorien and Lothric. Um, and all of those fights have, uh, their multi-phase fights where, uh, each boss buffs themselves halfway through the fight with the same basic attacks, but, uh, now with, um, you know, an added fire element in keeping with the whole fire motif of Dark Souls. Uh, it's very similar to the way Lady Maria starts coming out with blood area of effect and fire area of effects in her second and third phases, respectively. And it's like, it's interesting to me looking back, having played Dark Souls 3 now, to see sort of the shared DNA between these games that, that came out within a year of one another. They're being worked on somewhat simultaneously by the same team under the same, you know, director. It's, it's very interesting to see the, the shared DNA between these sorts of games. Another fun fact about Lady Maria, uh, Vati Vidya does the Prepare to Cry videos. Preeminent Souls lore guy uh, has said numerous times that he uh, would love to do a Prepare to Cry video about Maria's story, and it has not happened. It's become like a running gag in his comments section that like, oh, he is, it's like his George R. R. Martin, you know, Winds of Winter. Like that video is never coming out. He's never going to make that video. That book will never be finished. It's all futile, much like me trying to do this boss fight and dying when she has, like, one HP left. Anyway. If at first, second, and third, and probably some others that I cut out, you don't succeed, try, try again. And die, die again, and cry, cry again. Oh, wasn't that a Seinfeld? Oh, that was the Seinfeld. It's the... That's why they call it Cry, Cry Again. First you cry. And then you cry again. Oh, that was when he was bootlegging movies with the camcorder and Elaine taped over his copy of Cry, Cry Again with her, like, filming herself doing the dance with the little kicks and the thumbs. Ah, oh, classic. Excellent. Excellent episode. Excellent show. Not to delve into my personal life on my on my video game Let's Play that I do for my sister, but um, I have been on a couple dates recently that have gone well. Uh, but my my date uh, 
was a was always a friends person and not a Seinfeld person, and so it's like. Mm. You know, uh, you know, lo love or at least infatuation can overcome uh, impossible odds, but I don't know, man. Friends is. Ugh. I don't know, it's just a foreign... It's a very foreign idea to me, that the idea that someone can watch Jurassic Park for the first time and not go, oh, Newman! When Dennis Nedry shows up. Anyway, enough about me. There we go. And look, she even has the same death pose as Garman. Sort of a gesture to the heavens. The night and the nightmare were long. And once again, your reward for the boss fight is the thing that gets you out of the room the boss fight was in. Yeah, given how linear this this DLC is, it kind of uh, it, it kind of eschews typical FromSoft quest and level design in favor of just like yeah, just go straight ahead. Good hunter, this may sound strange, but have I somehow changed moments ago from some place, perhaps deep within? I sensed a liberation from heavy shackles. Not that I would know. How passing strange. <laughs> Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. Yeah, as if, uh, as if it wasn't obvious enough, or you just didn't believe me that that the doll is uh, based on Maria. I also came here half expecting to find Garman there, maybe with some extra sort of dialogue, but uh, I don't think he has any. I think you don't really see him again until, you know, you beat Murgo's wet nurse and the dream catches fire and you, you start the end game. Before we move on, we're gonna turn into a cauliflower. Also a little silly, I think, that there's essentially two checkpoints right next to each other. Because you got one outside in the Luminwood Gardens, and then another, like, just beyond the door in the clock tower. Weird little side effect of making such a, a, a linear progression in games that are usually typically more oblique, even when there is a set path through. Like, Dark Souls 3 is very linear, but there are still parts where you have to double back, or you have a choice of where you can go, and you it, it, essentially, you know, it's a fork in the road, and you have to do both things but you have a choice on which order to do them in. This DLC being a sort of microcosm of, of, a, of a Souls game, it kind of... It doesn't really have that. The closest thing is going back to fight Lawrence, which, I mean, you know how I feel about Lawrence, so... And, uh... Yeah, this seems par for the course for a Nightmare Realm to have just impossible architecture. You can see the city below, under the water there. So we are on a, on a different sort of strata of the Nightmare. You can also see ships off in the distance. I didn't point it out when we were there in the main game, but in Nightmare Frontier, you can see those ship masts. 
suggesting that all these nightmare realms are, are more connected than we might think. What's up, dude? I'm new in town. Curse here, curse there, a curse for he and she. Why care? A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, source of all greatness, all things that be. Listen for the baneful chants. Weep with them as one in trance. Weep with us. Oh, weep with us. So, it'll only say all that stuff and give you that thing if you are a, uh, a Lumen Wood. This is also the final Arcane Hunter tool in the game, the Accursed Brew. Sort of like the Molotov cocktail, you throw it to summon uh, ghostly apparitions that uh, fly around and attack people. Uh, I can't show it off in-game as I, I did not collect it on the President Grixon run, and I don't have 30 arcane. I'm not gonna to grind for it just to show off an arcane hunter tool that nobody really uses anyway. Uh, but we will see... Uh, enemies that use a very similar thing as we get into this level. So welcome to Inns... I mean, the fishing hamlet. We're in the home stretch, baby. <laughs> 